In this lecture, we'll be talking about lazy initialization in asynchronous programming. So what is this lazy initialization? Lazy initialization of an object means that its creation is deferred until it is first used. Lazy initialization is primarily used to improve performance, avoid wasteful computations, and reduce program memory requirement. And you may be wondering why do we really need to understand about this lazy initialization of asynchronous programming suddenly while we learn about this asynchronous programming itself because it looks like it's way too complex. Well, as you know, we are going to be building a framework in our playwright with csharp.net. We are going to ensure that we can also improve the performance to avoid wasteful computation and reduce the program memory requirement. We are going to be using lazy initialization as well as a part of our framework development. And while we get to that particular part, you will understand why lazy initialization needs to be used. But before you are going to get there, I thought, why not we just add an introduction of lazy initialization so that you will understand how we can utilize lazy initialization once we get there. So if we go to our code that we have written with our async HTTP client for any of the code, for example, maybe even this code, as you can see the demo async HTTP client async. If I just put a breakpoint over here and if I put a breakpoint over here just for the demonstration purpose, you may be wondering once the code start executing here, the fetch data async, as you know, the breakpoint once it hits, it is going to perform a call to the fetch data immediately once it hits this particular line and once we move out of this particular line to the next breakpoint. So it is going to call this method fetch data async and you know that the call is going to go all the way to this method and then these lines of codes are going to be executed and then the second line is going to be executed with all these lines are going to be executed as well, like calling these four lines of code, and only then this line is going to be executed, right? But what if you want to defer this execution until you call the response one? You can't really do that in this particular line of code because that is how the nature of the code is. So I will tell you what I really mean about that. So if I try to run the code in debug mode, you'll notice that we have got hit in this particular line of code. And now once I do a step into to this particular code, you will notice that the code execution is flowing all the way to the fetch data async method. And it is going to keep going into this particular method, as you can see, which is quite expected. And because as you know, this is an asynchronous code, the call has came all the way to the second response. As I told you, the thread pool has got the execution of the get async method. So once it is available for us, then it is automatically going to pick up to the second caller. That is the reason why I told you that the execution has come to the next line of execution, the fetch data. But now if I try to do a step into once again, you will notice that it is going to the particular line. And once I go over here, then it is going to go to the next line of code. So, but you got the idea, right? Like, because this is all going to be asynchronous code, it is going to do all those operations for you in parallel and everything is going to come up the response as you can see over here you can't run one by one like synchronous code as you always do once i run this particular first line of code the methods are going to be called like the fetch data and the execution is going to happen and once i call the second line this method is going to call and going to perform the operation even before i call the response one and response two in this line of code which is line number 22 in the task dot when any method because that is how the nature of the codes are all the time while we write. But what if I want to defer this operation and only call the fetch data operation during its invocation? So this way it's going to reduce the footprint of the memory as well as better memory management and stuff. Because what if you're going to have like multiple different responses which you only require to call only while you need it instead of you always trying to initialize every single request for all the operation that you need. So that will improve the performance most of the time. For example, if you have got like 100 different API calls, but you are in this method is going to look for just only one API call and 99 API calls are not even required, then you need to somehow bypass all those 99 API calls and just run the only API call which you need it. How do you do that? Well, you can't do with this particular line of code or you can't do with this particular code execution 
Rather, you actually need to do it using the lazy initialization. So I'm going to show you a simple example with a simple code block instead of using this code. So I'm going to copy paste it over here. And I'm going to say demo async HTTP client with lazy. The only thing which I need to do to make the code to be a lazy initialization is I am going to put a new of lazy keywords. So once I put a lazy over here, it's going to bring you a lazy of type T. So I'm going to bring the lazy of type T. And you know that the fetch data async method is going to return as a task of string. I'm going to write the code something like this, a task of the type string, which is going to be the return value of our method, which I wanted to return. And I am going to run this particular code block into the expression. I'm going to write this as an expression, something like this using the parenthesis. So this way it is going to run, but make sure that you remove this await keyword because this is not how the code is going to be working for you. And you guess what? Because we have the ankle bracket over here, I also need to ensure that I close it. So now that once you read the particular code, you will notice that it's going to have a new of lazy of the return type of this particular method, which is the fetch data async. So I'm going to put that over here because that is what we are expecting as the response one. And we also need to run everything inside this particular code block. If you compare this code with the synchronous web client code, while we try to run the task.run method, this is exactly what we try to do while calling the fetch data method as well. And that is exactly what we are trying to do with the fetch data async method over here while we are trying to run this. So this is how you make the change. So now let's try to make the change again for the line number 20 as well. So basically, I'm going to get rid of this await. I'm going to say new of lazy and I'm going to say task of string and the string should be like this. And I'm going to open and close the parentheses and I'm going to run this code block inside this particular parentheses over here. So hopefully that makes very sense for you. So now that this is going to be a lazy initialized code for us. And once I do that, I then need to ensure that I am going to call the value of this particular response. So you see that now once I try to run this particular code, it is not going to run as expected over here because it is just going to give you the response alone. But in order to invoke the lazy initialization, you need to call a property called as value. So this will get the lazy initialized value of the current lazy instance. So we need to call the value property and we need to call the value property over here. And guess what? We are going to see a me message over here saying that the current async method lacks the await operator and will run this code synchronously. Because this code does not even shows you anywhere about the asynchronous operation, so now this code can be happily made as a non-async code, which I can just turn it into a code something like this, like publish static void, pretty much like a synchronous code, but I'm still going to run this code as an async code. But guess what? This code is not going to perform like a synchronous code because you are going to invoke the actual operation only while you require it. So basically you're going to defer the object creation. So that way this is going to be even more better as well. So now I'm going to go to the program.cs file over here. I'm going to comment this line of code and I'm going to run the async HTTP client dot demo async with the lazy init and now if i put a breakpoint in the demo lazy init over here and if i put a breakpoint over here and if i try to debug this particular piece of code you will notice that right now once i run this code the fetch data async line is being hit and what will happen if i try to do a step over or maybe step into Will it go to the fetch data async method because it also has a breakpoint over here? Let's see if that's going to happen. So if I try to do a step into, do you see that it is not going inside the fetch data async method at all? It is just going out of this particular response one and it's going to the response two, the second line of code, instead of going to the fetch data async method itself. That is what I mean about the lazy initialization. So now it has just created a reference, but it's not really running the particular line of code. So if I try to do a step into again, 
this line is also not being executed unless until you're going to be calling this response one dot value method so if i try to do a step into right now you will notice that we are getting an exception over here which is fine let me also stop it because what we are trying to do is we're just getting the value let me also get the result because that is what is going to print the result for us you remember pretty much exactly like how we did with our synchronous code while we try to get any of the response back we need to use the result over here not just the value because the value is going to invoke the lazy initialization then we also need to call the result over here so i'm going to put the result for both of these lines of code and now if i try to debug this so over here i'm going to step over and once i run this code you see that it is going into this fetch data async method only this point of time while i call the value dot result property over here and unless until that that operation is being deferred and now is when the actual execution is going to happen and if i just run over again you see that the second line is being executed and it is going to print those value for us over here so the first response has been printed and only then the second response is going to be printed for us over here so this is happening because of the lazy initialization that is happening for us over here so this is also one of the most important concept that we need to understand while we write the playwright automation testing framework because it is going to be useful for us as well. And I hope you got the idea of lazy initialization and this is how we can write the lazy initialization in much, much better fashion.